What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. So, we're going to talk about those diatoms that I uh, talked about only nine days ago. And I have some great news for you guys. So, if you have diatoms in your tank right now, you might want to stick around because that's what we're going to talk about. This tank has them, and that tank doesn't. And I'm going to tell you why. So, I put out a video nine days ago, and the weather started to change and all of a sudden I noticed both my tanks had diatoms on the sand bed. This one here is over a year old. The sand is not a year old. I did replace the sand, I don't know, three months ago maybe. I could be lowballing it. It could be four months ago. I don't know. And this tank is three months old. So it's a little coincidental there, I think. But anyway, let's talk about it and get right to it. So when you're experimenting with your reef tank, it's very important to only do one thing at a time, and that's what I have done. And I want to talk about the two things that I was getting ready to do and which one I chose to do first. So the first thing is, is I noticed my pre-sediment filter on my RO system was brown, and I usually change it every five to, five to six months, and it's never been brown before. So that made me think, you know, I have city water, maybe something has changed with the city water. So I changed my pre-sediment filter and my two carbon blocks. And then two days ago, I decided to change my RODI membrane. And the membrane was pretty nasty. Now, it was less than a year and a half old, so it shouldn't have been that nasty. But within that year and a half, I have set up this tank and I've set up other tanks and I've actually brought water to a local reefer that had a tank uh, issue and needed water. So I've gone through quite a bit of water in the past year or so. Those were all changed. And then what I did is, is I dumped out my 30-gallon brute trash can. I emptied all the water right down the sink. And then I took my two extra 5-gallon jugs, dumped them, washed everything out with hot water and a rag. Really, really good. Cleaned them up and, they, and then made a brand new stockpile of RODI water. I was going to attack both tanks with water changes with, you know, fresh RODI water, but I didn't do that. I did a lot of research, and how I did my research was by looking at my own videos. So there's something that I've done for the past four years that I stopped doing about, I'd say, four months ago maybe. Um, I don't remember the exact date when I stopped it, but I stopped using a certain product because... When I started in the hobby, I was using a ton of chemicals to try to keep the reef tank stable, you know, worrying about certain things like phosphates and nitrates and all that other stuff. Well, over the years, I've become a little bit better at maintaining a reef tank more naturally with, you know, good reef husbandry. And so I've taken a lot of the chemicals out and it's worked really well. Everything's starting to close up. It's nighttime. Don't mind that. There are a few changes or a few additions in both tanks that you'll probably see, but we'll talk about those later on this week, you know, like some new frags and some new fish. But anyway, so the diatoms. So yes, this tank still has them. When it's about 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, you know, and it's full spectrum, the sand is pretty brown. It's after 9 o'clock right now, so you can see that the diatoms are starting to fade away because that's what they do when the lights go out. They are photosynthetic. So if you have diatoms and you look at your tank like three hours after lights out, it probably looks really nice and clean. And then as soon as the light comes on, boom, you got that diatom bloom. So 75, I have not done anything to. I haven't even done a water change yet with that new RO water. I am going to attack these diatoms with... Oh, you know, just a standard 20% weekly water change and see what happens, you know, now that I've added all the new filtration and cleaned everything up, you know, maybe silicates were coming through and sitting in there. So that's what we're going to do with the 75. Now let's take a walk. I have turned the lights up on the nano tank so that you can see the sand bed. Look how freaking crisp and clean this is. Let me hear. I'm going to turn it down. Look at that. Super white, absolutely spotless. The tank may look a little different. I took some GSP, I put it all over the place, got some new fish, but again, that's for a different video. We're talking about diatoms. So the diatoms are gone in this tank. 
completely. And what I added to it only took 48 hours to clean. I used the recommended amount, didn't do anything crazy, nothing extra, and it is absolutely gone. The glass is spotless. It literally looks like I just did a water change and cleaned the glass, but I did not, trust me. I did do a sand sifting two days ago. Five, I did a five gallon water change and I sand sifted it and the bottom of the bucket was nasty brown stuff everywhere. Well, that brown stuff came back maybe four hours after doing the water change. So what I ended up doing was adding a chemical uh, that I stopped using that I've always used. And that's just two words, Seachem Fosgard. Yep, I've been running Fosgard on my reef tanks since I've been in the hobby because I was always afraid of phosphates. Well, I know how to control phosphates, but silicates, that's a different story. That's why I added the Fosgard in here and not in the 75. So I'm going to try to maintain the silicates and these diatoms using Fosgard in the nano tank. And in the 75, I'm going to try to get rid of the diatoms using really good RODI water. So, you know, I don't know if I've said it in this video, but when you're experimenting on your reef tank, you need to do one thing at a time. Because if you do two, you're not gonna know what actually made the difference. So if I added Fosgard and did a big water change or multiple water changes on this tank with the brand new RO water, I wouldn't really know which one fixed it. So at this point, since I'm running the Fosgard for only 48 hours in here and it is absolutely flawless, um, and in the past, my sand bed has always been absolutely flawless. So I'm going to, you know, I'd like to say, yep, Fosgard did it, but I'm also going to keep you guys posted on how the sand bed looks from only doing water changes on a 75. So that's it. So for those of you that did leave a comment in that video that I posted about the, uh, the diatom issue, if it was due to the weather, whether it was... You know, due to the seasons changing or not, you know, the Fosgard seems to have destroyed it in two days. So, yep. Hey, look at this real quick. Here are these fish, but look at that thing back there. What is up with that thing throwing up? Hmm. Gotta keep an eye on that. Anyway, Fosgard, if you got diatoms and you've never tried it before, give it a shot. It's always worked for me in the past. I'm going to continue. I just have it in a, a little media mesh bag in the um, the all-in-one section back there and that's it I used exactly what the recommended dose was per gallons this was this is 16 total gallons in this tank and I think I used five teaspoons or something like that I don't remember I wrote it all down did the math and it was very very little and it's it's powerful stuff so if you're gonna use it I highly recommend replacing it every 30 days because it is aluminum based and I know a lot of people have said oh the leech is aluminum well I've been running it for over three years and I've never had any issues as long as you replace it every 30 days I think you're okay so that's it for now hope you guys enjoyed the video get ready because I have a lot more videos planned and that's it I will see you guys on the next one later all right, I just want to thank you guys again for stopping by. If you did like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And while you're here, hit that little crab icon to subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell for any future videos or updates. And in case you haven't seen these two videos, you might want to click on one and check it out. Again, thanks for stopping by.